There can be only one. The stakes in 2024 could not be higher. The Air Force needs to decide who will build the NGAD fighter. This sixth generation marvel represents a turning point in fighter aircraft design and the ability of the U.S. Air Force to continue its unmatched air superiority in the battle space. The contest has come down to two aerospace titans, Lockheed versus Boeing, and whoever wins this deal could shape the future of each company. Yet this project is so cloaked in mystery that it's like the Area 51 of modern aviation. Using these two concept models, we will take a deeper dive into this competition. Who will win? After years of development, we begin our story last May when the Air Force threw down the gauntlet, calling for a contractor to finalize and build a clean sheet design of an aircraft so advanced that it's set to eclipse the legendary F-22 Raptor. This isn't just another fighter jet. It's a generational leap into the future with an aggressive timeline that's aiming to hit production lines by the end of this decade. But hold on, NGAD isn't just a single aircraft. It's an entire family of systems. A master and its fleet of drone wingmen known as Collaborative Combat Aircraft. More on that later. Join me, Tog, as we unravel the secrets, the rivalries, and the groundbreaking advancements of the NGAD project. Also, there's more at stake than just an airframe design. We'll also take a look at how the competition to build the advanced engine which will power the NGAD is just starting to heat up and other related components. So buckle up, it's going to be an exhilarating ride into the future of aviation. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more high-flying content on this channel. We are cleared for takeoff. Here we go. Pilotphotog.com As we mentioned, this competition has come down to Boeing and Lockheed Martin. And before we get into the pros and cons of each vendor, we need to quickly mention that Northrop Grumman had been involved in the NGAD contest, but recently bowed out. This was due to two reasons. Number one, they are working on the sixth generation bomber known as the B-21 Raider. And number two, they are also working on the Navy's version of NGAD, known as FAXX. Grumman has a long history of developing naval aircraft, so it seems like a good fit. I've done videos all about the FAXX and Raider. You can check them out after this one. Getting back to the two big players in the NGAD competition, we'll start with a case for Boeing. The aerospace giant that is Boeing has a history of innovative designs such as the FA-18 Super Hornet and the F-15EX. Their approach often focuses on versatility and multi-role capabilities, which could be beneficial for the NGAD program. Commercial Aviation Expertise Boeing's extensive experience in commercial aviation could provide unique insights into advanced technologies, including efficient aerodynamics, materials, and systems integration. Cost Management Boeing might offer more competitive pricing strategies, drawing from its broader commercial and defense production lines. Some things working against Boeing could be Recent challenges Boeing has faced significant challenges recently, most notably with a 737 MAX. These issues may raise concerns about their management and quality control processes. Less stealth experience. Compared to Lockheed Martin, Boeing has less experience with stealth technology, which is a critical component of fifth and sixth generation fighters. Next, we will look at Lockheed Martin, making the case for Lockheed R, stealth technology expertise. Lockheed Martin is renowned for its expertise in stealth, exemplified by the F-22 and F-35. This experience is crucial to the NGAD program, which demands advanced stealth capabilities. Proven track record with fifth generation fighters. As a manufacturer of the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning, Lockheed has a proven track record in developing and producing fifth generation fighters in large numbers, which closely aligns with the NGAD's objectives. Sophisticated Systems Integration Lockheed has demonstrated capabilities in integrating complex systems, a necessary skill for the advanced avionics and sensor fusion expected in NGAD. Working against Lockheed could be a higher cost profile. Lockheed's projects, particularly the F-35, have been criticized for high costs. This could be a concern for the NGAD program, 
given the emphasis on budget management. Over-reliance on a single manufacturer. Although not inherently Lockheed's fault, awarding the contract to Lockheed could centralize U.S. fighter production in one company, potentially limiting diversity in design and innovation. When it comes to the NGAD airframe, each company is offering distinct advantages. Boeing brings innovative design and cost management, while Lockheed offers unmatched stealth technology and experience with fifth-generation fighters. Boeing's recent challenges and Lockheed's higher cost profiles present potential drawbacks. The decision will ultimately hinge on what set of strengths and weaknesses aligns best with the Air Force's vision of the NGAD program. And before I reveal my predictions, we also have to take a look at other components critical to the NGAD, such as the engines. The NGAD contract will also involve an all-new and revolutionary power plant known as an adaptive cycle engine. This power plant is a sophisticated type of jet engine designed to provide high performance across a wide range of speeds and altitudes. When it came to engines in the past, you had to choose a high performance afterburning engine such as those found on F-15s or a fuel efficient non-afterburning engine such as those found on A-10s. Adaptive cycle engines automatically switch between high thrust, high performance modes to fuel efficient range extending modes, giving the aircraft the best of both worlds. These engines also provide significantly more electrical power due to their advanced cooling, an absolute necessity for the power hungry electronic systems that the NGAD fighter will demand. And just like the competition for the NGAD airframe, we've come down to two engine manufacturers, Pratt & Whitney and General Electric. When it comes to Pratt & Whitney, things working in their favor are a proven track record. Pratt & Whitney has a long history in the military engine market, notably with the F-135 engine that's used in the F-35. This experience is invaluable for the NGAD's demanding requirements, and they've also developed their own adaptive cycle engine known as the XA-101. Innovative Technologies Pratt & Whitney has been at the forefront of developing innovative technologies like the geared turbofan, which could provide insights into creating more efficient and powerful engines for the NGAD. Things working against Pratt & Whitney could be cost concerns. Similar to their experience with the F-35 program, cost overruns and budget concerns might be a factor, as Pratt & Whitney engines are often high in performance, but also in cost. And although not really a strong argument, we also have to consider the risk of complacency. Being a long-time contractor might lead to less incentive for radical innovation, which is crucial for a next-generation project like NGAD. When it comes to the other player in the adaptive engine contest, things working in General Electric's favor are Advanced Engine Technology GE is known for its technological advancements in engine design, such as their own prototype adaptive cycle engine, the XA100. This has been in the works since about 2007, and a full-scale model has been developed to fit inside the F-35A and C. Strong Research and Development or R&D Capabilities GE invests heavily in R&D, which is crucial for pushing the boundaries of engine technology to meet the futuristic demands of NGAD. GE also has experience in both commercial and military aviation. Some things that could work against GE could be Integration Challenges while GE excels in engine technology, integrating their engine into a complex airframe like the NGAD could pose some challenges. Focus on commercial engines. Today, GE's primary focus is on the commercial engine market, which might affect their approach to military-specific requirements, such as the extreme stealth and combat durability requirements of the NGAD. Both Pratt & Whitney and General Electric bring a distinct advantage to the table. Pratt & Whitney has a strong track record and established relationships in the military engine manufacturing space. Whereas General Electric offers cutting-edge technology and a robust R&D background. And like with most brand arguments such as Ford versus Chevy, each side will only see their pros and the other side's cons. Along with the competitions for the airframe and engine, there are two other major components of the NGAD program, CCAs and avionics. Collaborative Combat Aircraft, or CCAs, are unmanned drones of various sizes, capabilities, and costs that are designed to team with manned aircraft like the F-35 and NGAD. They have large amounts of autonomy, rely heavily on AI, and most importantly, help reduce risk to the human pilots. 
The NGAD fighter will be the central node of this connected system of drones, and several manufacturers will likely contribute drones of various sizes to the overall project. As far as the total NGAD package goes, a fancy airframe and hot engines are not enough. The NGAD fighter by definition will push the limits of technology, and an advanced avionics package will be needed to combine all these systems to an efficient warfighting platform. The use of AI, machine learning, human interfaces, and other technologies will be required, making this a massive project of its own. Only the most experienced manufacturer could likely take this on. All right, aviation fans, as we come to the end of our deep dive into the next generation air dominance or NGAD fighter competition, it's time for me, Tog, to share predictions on how this high stake contest will unfold. Firstly, when it comes to the critical airframe contract, I'm putting my bets on Lockheed Martin. Lockheed is known for their unparalleled expertise and history in stealth technology. They've demonstrated this with fifth generation fighters like the F-22 and F-35. And in my opinion, are the best position to develop and manufacture the NGAD airframe. Switching gears to the powerhouse of the NGAD, the engine contract, my prediction leans towards General Electric, GE's cutting edge work on adaptive cycle engines combined with their relentless innovation in engine technology, positions them ideally to provide the thrust behind NGAD's ambitious performance goals. Their advanced propulsion systems could be key in delivering an engine that meets the incredible operational demands of this next generation fighter. Now let's talk about Boeing. Even though they might not snag the airframe contract, I foresee an important role for them in the NGAD program. Boeing's vast experience in both commercial and military aviation could be pivotal in developing the drone wingman for the NGAD, adding a formidable element to this future air dominance system. If this turns out to be true, then technically Boeing would still be a fighter airframe manufacturer, just of the unmanned variety. And last but not least, Northrop Grumman's role in this grand scheme shouldn't be underestimated. Given their impressive history in developing sophisticated avionics, I predict they will be the brains behind the NGAD's advanced electronic systems. Their expertise in sensors, communication systems, and electronic warfare could provide the NGAD with unparalleled situational awareness and connectivity. In summary, if these predictions hold true, the NGAD program is shaping up to be a collaboration of the best in the industry, each bringing their unique strength to the table. Lockheed Martin's airframe, General Electric's engines, Boeing's drone technology, and Northrop Grumman's avionics could combine to create a truly next-generation fighter, one that will dominate the skies for years and possibly decades to come. Again, these are my predictions. I could be way off. Let me know your thoughts, your predictions, and reasoning in the comments below. That's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed this analysis and want to stay updated on the latest in military aviation, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more content, and as always, keep looking to the skies. The NGAD fighter will be a generational leap in military aviation technology, and we are fortunate to see it unfold in this exciting time in aviation. A new airframe is a rare thing, and I'm glad we're here for it. This is Tog, signing off. And now you know. PilotPhotog.com